Hello and welcome to State of the Economy. Uh, today we have uh, as our guest a member of parliament from Orissa, uh, Mr. Tathagata Satpati. Uh, why we have uh, Mr. Satpati in our show is because uh, we thought for a change, uh, uh, let us get a view uh, of the grassroots uh, on certain key uh, economic issues. And why, why do I say grassroots? Because uh, uh, Satagata Satpati ha has won uh, elections four times. This is his fourth term. And uh, uh, therefore, uh, we have to assume that he, he knows his people well and the people understand him equally well. And uh, therefore, uh, we thought he's the right person uh, to, to talk to us about uh, uh, some of the very critical issues uh, facing the economy today, such as rural distress. Uh, the whole budget was uh, uh, talked about rural distress. One doesn't know whether it's really moved on to do something about rural distress, uh, whether the allocations are enough or whether the intent uh, expressed in the budget would translate uh, uh, on the ground in, in any uh, substantive way. Um, uh, so to discuss all that and uh, uh, much more, uh, uh, we have Mr. Satpati. Welcome to our show, uh, Mr. Tathagata Satpati. So, so you... Uh, uh, you're not only an active parliamentarian, you, uh, you're also an activist parliamentarian because people <laughs> remember your, your intervention uh, when you wrote a letter to the TRAI, probably the first MP to write to TRAI on the net neutrality issue where, where you supported net neutrality. And um, I remember you got uh, quite a lot of support in social media. Now, now quite apart from that, uh, what I want to discuss with you today is uh, rural distress. Uh, you come from Orissa. Orissa has seen a lot of poverty, rural distress, and Orissa has also seen a lot of changes in the last 20 years uh, uh, as uh, during the Biju Janta Dal rule. Uh, now, the budget uh, clearly said that rural distress, rural demand was a big challenge, Mr. Jaitley uh, had argued. And uh, I have read some of your writings on, uh, on agriculture, rural India, uh, and the needs of the people. And uh, you in the past uh, have clearly said uh, that this government did not have uh, a real appreciation of, of how to improve agriculture, how to get, have a second green revolution, although they talked about second green revolution. And last year in the context of the way they were going about the land bill, you, you also argued that, well, this, this government... Uh, uh, was seen as as very pro corporate, and uh, you you express doubt whether they have uh, indeed have a deep understanding of what <laughs> the rural uh, sector wants or agriculture wants. Uh, so uh, that's the background. So now this budget claims that it has addressed a lot of uh, issues relating to rural distress, farmers who have been uh, really suffering in the last uh, one year, uh, which is which everybody knows about. So. So how do you see uh, a rural economy, agriculture uh, panning out from here on in the context of the budget? First of all, thank you for uh, bringing me here. Lok Sabha MP in a, mm. on a Rajya Sabha television show. Yeah. Uh, after that, I would like to say you spoke of the land bill. You mentioned the land bill as if it is done and over with. Mm -hmm. It is not. Uh, something that has gone out as yet. Mm -hmm. There was a, uh, there are still meetings of the uh, committee uh, that has been set up uh, under the chairmanship of uh, Mr. S. S. Aluwalia mm -hmm. just a few days ago, I think yesterday or day before. That means it is somewhere there in the back burners. Mm -hmm. And if you heard the Parliamentary Affairs Minister talk today about the urban uh, bill that was uh, Forward, that came up, the real estate uh, yeah. bill. He also mentioned about the shortage of land for uh, creating uh, homes and... Uh, shortage of land. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. shortage of land for creating homes and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So what I believe is that uh, this government is a government which puts up many things which are pro-rich, pro-corporate mm -hmm. and when the opposition is uh, very strong and vociferous and I am not talking about the opposition within the house 
or houses, mm -hmm. but the opposition outside also, social opposition, mm. then what they do is they very slyly take it back and keep it in the back burners with the embers with glowing, mm -hmm. so that at the opportune moment they can just pop it and you know mm. see whether it gets through or not again. Mm -hmm. So it's a very dangerous mindset mm -hmm. and I think uh, there should be more transparency. Mm -hmm. As far as uh, so you're saying for, that the land bill uh, in its is not dead and gone. Earlier form, it can come back. Yes, yes, absolutely. One thought that they were letting the states uh, take a decision on <laughs> no. what form they want to implement. No, no, no. There's still in the, in the spirit of cooperative federalism. Yeah, there is. That's only speaking. Uh, you know, uh, as far as verbal uh, <laughs> gesturing goes. But in reality, uh, I do not think it is dead and gone. It is still very alive okay. and the embers are still uh, red hot. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't rule out anything. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as about, agriculture? Mm -hmm. About uh, rural or agricultural distress, the situation is indeed very bad. Very bad. Mm -hmm. In the sense that if you go... I would touch upon a very few points of the budget. If you go on to the uh, irrigation field, mm -hmm. the whole of this subcontinent, I do not know much about uh, Pakistan or uh, Bangladesh, but I am talking about the rest of the subcontinent, that's India. Mm -hmm. If you see from the north to the south, the groundwater is falling. Mm -hmm. Irrigation facilities have not improved. Mm -hmm. And the money being apportioned off for AIBP and other projects mm. is uh, less or sometimes just the same as of the last two years. This is what one criticism is. In real terms, money has not been, money has not been increased. increased yeah. This is one thing. Okay. Second thing is your that 82,000 crores or 85,000 crores that is being uh, offered as subsidy for fertilizers. Mm. You know that this is not a DBT proposal. It's not going to the farmer. Yeah. It's going to the fertilizer manufacturers. Very uh, insidiously, assiduously, the government has managed to do something mm -hmm. over the years. I am not blaming the BJP-led BJP, yeah. NDA mm -hmm. or the Congress-led UPA. Mm -hmm. I am not naming political parties. I am you talking about the system. Yeah. Yes, I am talking about the system. Mm -hmm. Over a period of time, your major government-controlled fertilizer plants have been made redundant and have more or less all of them have shut down, shut most down. of them. Yeah. So now you have only private players in the field of fertilizer manufacture. Mm -hmm. You are uh, giving such a huge portion of the budget to those private manufacturers. Mm -hmm. My point is that why fund fertilizer companies mm -hmm. when the prime minister is talking about other means of uh, Mm -hmm. uh, farming and giving Sikkim as an example, mm -hmm. when your biotechnology is improving, mm -hmm. why do you want to invest on fertilizer so much? Why not give the direct benefit the to farmer. the farmer? Let her or him decide mm -hmm. where they want to spend that money. Okay. Mm -hmm. Create a master plan for water preservation mm -hmm. and how you want to tap into the field of irrigation. Mm -hmm. See, the central government is not the implementing authority. It's a, it's a the, state subject. I it's a that. state subject. Mm. All that you can do is you can create a guideline mm -hmm. and put in your funds. Mm -hmm. And let the states work out because every state has unique problems. Yeah. You cannot have a general across the board solution to all problems. Yeah. But here, what I understand is, first of all, with the political will now, mm -hmm. there is... Uh, Probably disenchantment within the government. Probably, mm -hmm. I'm saying. Secondly, there is a gross, uh, not indiscipline, that would be a wrong word to use, uh, inexperience mm -hmm. yeah. amongst the ministers. And third, I think the prime minister comes from a post of a chief minister where he was hands on implementing things. Yeah. He might have been very good there. But when you come to Delhi, the perception has to change. Mm -hmm. This is more policy driven rather than uh, yeah. implementation driven. Yeah. So somewhere we are going wrong. Mm -hmm. The UPA also had lost touch with uh, ground realities. Yeah. These people from the beginning, mm -hmm. except a few top corporates who are uh, handling things at the top level mm -hmm. for their own benefits, mm -hmm. the nation today feels somehow that the BJP government has forgotten us in the uh, process of 
So how would you governance. so how would you characterize this government's uh, approach to or attitude to farmers uh, in the last one year? Because we've had back to back droughts, we've had unseasonal rains, we have we and had, the El Nino effect is still lasting. Yeah, lasting, uh, <coughs> we again had an unseasonal rains uh, last week. Yes. Uh, so, which sent a scare like it did last year. And we've had two years of UPA showing agriculture growth at 0.3%, you know, almost close to zero. Yes. Now, do you see this budget urgently addressing uh, this crisis? There, there is a crisis facing us because the pulses production, for instance, it had peaked at some 18 uh, million tons or 19 million now there is a fear that it is coming ba going back to about 14 15 million tons which was uh, some seven you're going back to your 2008 2009 uh, exactly. figures so so is there a is there a crisis and and you come from a state uh, which is largely agriculture uh, right. dependent and orissa has also done a lot of experimentation in agriculture and they've converted large parts kalandi and all which used to be very uh, unproductive uh, now far more productive. Uh, so, so how so do you? So the highest yield of paddy per hectare is in Kalahandi now. Kalahandi, yeah. <laughs> and that's what the I, best I, yeah, rice. That's why I thought of uh, taking the Kalahandi example. Yes. Now uh, you are arguing for a more decentralized uh, center, playing a more decentralized uh, role as a guide and funding wherever uh, irrigation, etc., where capital uh, uh, investment funding required in agriculture. Is the government doing that, or is it uh, is it looking at uh, some other way of addressing this whole issue? Because I remember reading one of your pieces where you argued that, that the BJP probably has some abstract conception in their mind to move uh, you know tens of millions of people out of agriculture in the manner of uh, probably you know the great leap forward <laughs> in China and uh, without really looking at ground realities and and you use the word in that article, this could fracture rural society. I remember yes. the word that you used. Yes. Now, why do you say that? See, Chai, you gave the example of China. Mm -hmm. You know that this great leap in China failed. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the reasons why, because of which Mao Zedong, when he died, he was an unhappy, sad man. Mm -hmm. Because although his revolution was successful, this failed. Mm -hmm. Similarly, here what we are seeing is, instead of empowering, making agriculture uh, uh, profitable, mm -hmm. thereby uh, a respectable profession, mm -hmm. we are trying to sell the idea to people that get urbanized. Yeah. Our present urban uh, conglomeration or your urban uh, patches mm -hmm. are actually falling apart. You mm -hmm. do not have drinking water, you do not have sewerage, sewage. Mm -hmm. Most of our uh, ULBs, urban level, uh, urban local bodies, mm -hmm. they do not even differentiate between sewage and sewerage. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have multiple problems mm -hmm. taking place there. Mm -hmm. When you encourage people to migrate from rural areas, what is the alternate occupation that you are offering them? Mm. They are not skilled for urban living, first. Secondly, apart from agriculture, what else can they do? Have they been trained? Mm -hmm. Do they have the education? So you have to first reach out with education and then empower them to choose whether they want to live in the villages okay. or they want to go to urban centers. Just forcing people by taking away their land mm. Forcing people to migrate to urban areas will create a sort of a chaos which will be uncontrollable maybe after a decade or a decade and a half. Mm -hmm. So I believe the farmer has to feel mm -hmm. that this is something profitable I am doing. Mm -hmm. My children have a future if I possess this land. Mm -hmm. The children should feel that there is nothing wrong mm -hmm. uh, in being an agriculturist. It is not something looked down upon. Mm -hmm. When the government poo poos agriculture and says that, you know, too many people there, move away from there, yeah. then it looks like the government or the establishment does not like you because you are an agriculturist. And the, the constant claim that most people don't like farming. Yes, so, exactly. So, so, so it gives them a kind of signal that we shouldn't be here. We are in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Whereas I believe, suppose you make a farmer rich, mm -hmm. then 
his kids would need education. He would want to teach his kids in an English medium school yeah. and he would want better medical facilities. He would want better roads. So you're talking about natural transition. Yeah. Yes, that mm -hmm. would happen. Mm -hmm. Then your schools will move to the rural areas. Your uh, uh, hospitals will go closer to the people okay. who have the money. Mm -hmm. So why not give them money? Why pull that huge... Po we have a problem with a huge population. Mm -hmm. How do you think... A city like Delhi or Bombay or even your uh, second tier, th third tier cities, towns, mm -hmm. how would they handle so much population? Essentially, what you're saying that the transition from of population from uh, agriculture to, say, industry in India need not follow the same trajectory as it did in the West. Uh, Absolutely. With the, you you know, see, they, they are also constantly complaining that Western countries are teaching us how to save environment. Mm -hmm. Now, I feel there is that angle that we need development, so don't teach us anything. Mm. But there is also something in human nature that says that if you are an experienced person, I must learn from you. Yeah. Western societies have suffered due to pollution, have suffered due to urbanization, and they are decentralizing now. Mm -hmm. In the US, for instance, if you live in the downtown areas, your rent is lower mm. or you are considered a poorer mm -hmm. person poorer family. If you move to the suburbs, if you have a home in a suburban area, then you are a rich man. Mm -hmm. So their concept is already something that is established and known and mm -hmm. with a much smaller population. Yeah. So instead of uh, getting a whole huge population into mm -hmm. certain pockets, mm -hmm. why not make the countryside rich? Okay. Mm -hmm. Why not make them uh, capable of so you're saying you're talking, about, you're talking about a form of decentralization, yes, uh, absolutely, which uh, takes uh, urban amenities to rural clusters rather than taking uh, rural people out uh, and bringing them into some dense urban pockets. Yes. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, and urbanize yeah. the rural pockets. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Sam, what happens is in India, I have noticed one thing: if you have a strong leadership, mm -hmm. the leadership wants to concentrate all the powers in her or his hands. Mm -hmm. Whereas leadership is strengthened mm. when you are capable, you are not underconfident, you are capable of shedding the load mm -hmm. that let others decide, let others plan, let others take up the responsibilities, the blame and the credit, let it go to others also. Yeah. But I will let go. So how do you propose? So, so essentially what you're saying is that so there must be an agriculture policy which, uh, which empowers the, the states uh, and the district level uh, panchayats so that uh, so that the farmer gets uh, gets a, f a decentralized framework uh, of policies which which empowers uh, him or her right that's what you're talking yes. about right yes so the farmer's income should uh, should go up productivity it, it will go up if you oh. do not make it look like farming is terrible okay yeah so 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 how, how, so how do you visualize a, a second green revolution which mr modi talks about in that uh, case, the prime minister talks about the second green revolution or the whatever he's talking about. Mm -hmm. But uh, in action, if you see the budget, if you see the way the ministries are functioning, mm -hmm. that uh, mindset is not reflected in work. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would believe that empowering states mm -hmm. is possibly the only way mm -hmm. by which we can develop this country. Yeah. Every state has unique problems. The mm. problems of Kerala are not replicated in Kashmir. Mm -hmm. The problems of Gujarat are yeah. not replicated in Orissa or in Assam or anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So everyone has unique problems. Mm. You allow them to grow. Mm. You don't levy cess, you don't levy taxes where mm. you alone get the money. Mm. For example... So let me understand here what you said. <coughs> so, so going by your l logic, to have a decentralized framework uh, to to empower farmers and and also to make agriculture prosper, as you said, agriculture is a state subject. So, so does it make sense for a central authority to do the costing for all the different states with different uh, uh, dynamics and uh, have one MSP uh, minimum support price for you know uh, rise across all states? Uh, uh, they're supposed to have it for tw on twenty five products, but Effectively, it doesn't happen on 25 products, uh, MSP is not there. And the, uh, do you think that this system should also... It should go. 
and if you want to it, retain MSP, yeah, because, uh, because somebody sitting in Delhi calculates yes. Commission for Agriculture exactly. Costs and Prices. Exactly. And my uh, inputs yeah. for my land in Orissa and could Punjab, be you know, could be different. Could be different. Yes. Yeah, exactly. My requirement of water would be different from the requirement of water in Punjab yeah. or in Rajasthan. Yeah. So instead of you see, so if you imagine that India is say twenty nine countries, yeah. in some ways it is. Yes. So you you need to decentralize that process also. You should, but I am not talking about creating more of CI states. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. You see, with all this Azadi and all this um, problem coming up now, somebody saying I will say Bharat Mata ki jai, somebody saying I will not say Bharat Mata ki jai. Yeah. Once you, you know, the political message mm -hmm. is when you vitiate everything, mm -hmm. yeah. then it uh, the question comes to whether you like your mother or you don't like your mother. Yeah. I would not wish to comment on that publicly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My mother is precious to me, yeah, but yeah. it's not something I want to, yeah. you know, speak yeah. about I, in public. Yeah. Similarly, certain things, even in, see, I, <laughs> I differ basically in one thing. They said less of government, more of governance. Mm -hmm. I would say less of governance, more of government. Mm -hmm. Government for me stands for an effective judiciary. Mm -hmm. An effective, honest policing system. So more of quality government, you say? Yes. Mm. And less of governance. You give independence to the states, give independence to the mm. uh, individuals, to the universities. Let them function. Mm. Let everybody blossom. Mm. Why do you want to govern? Yeah. What is this desire to govern? Mm. You offer whatever facilities you have. Mm. Yeah. You offer that to the best of your ability. Mm -hmm. And let people function. So you're talking about a centralizing tendency which is not good. It is dangerous. Mm -hmm. This might even fracture the country. Mm -hmm. So, do you feel that whether it's agriculture or uh, whether it's health, uh, while this government speaks about fiscal decentralization, actually the, the DNA is to centralize? Is that your uh, argument? Yes, the DNA is to centralize. Drugs, again, uh, since mm -hmm. you mentioned it, mm -hmm. 42 specific drugs. They want to take it out of the control list. Mm -hmm. These are drugs that deal with cancer, with tuberculosis, with mm -hmm. leprosy. Mm -hmm. These are common diseases in India. Mm -hmm. Bad diseases, but common diseases in mm -hmm. India. Once you uh, de-enlist it, then the company, the pharma companies will have a freedom to put their pricing on it. Yeah. So something that you are spending, a, uh, a patient is spending 8,000 rupees now mm -hmm. per month, yeah. It would shoot up to 70,000, 80,000 rupees a month. Mm -hmm. Where would a poor uh, tuberculosis patient or a leprosy patient get that kind of money to yeah. uh, continue sure. uh, the treatment? Mm -hmm. So, anything you touch, mm -hmm. there is uh, something wrong happening there. Mm -hmm. That is because of the, de the centralizing uh, mm -hmm. process. Okay. If you decentralize, you just have a government that functions as a government, not does not interfere into many things. Mm -hmm. The situation I personally feel will improve. Mm -hmm. I am quite assertive and quite positive about it. Okay. I am not saying may. Mm -hmm. I am saying would improve, will improve. So you're finally. So what are you saying that the 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 panacea lies in uh, genuinely following the spirit of decentralization. Yes. And and making delivery of public services therefore possible to the people. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tathagat Sat Sat Satpati for talking to us. Uh, in, Thank it you. was a uh, pleasure having you uh, in our program. Uh, that's all we have in this uh, edition of State of the Economy. We'll be back with you next week. Thanks for watching.